everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, but sometimes a comedic touch. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. Hit the like button and the notification bell so you know when I have a new interview up. Today, I've got three of the four cats, and these guys have been in bands such as Badlands, uh, Miss Crazy, Quiet Riot, Rat, Rough Cut, uh, Blue Murder, um, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Metal Church and Wops. Oh, Wasp. <laughs> okay, guys. Wops. All right, we got the guys from Freak Show. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. good. How are you? Uh, not too Hello. bad. Not too bad. Um, I'm going to be taking score here for my fantasy hockey team. So, um, first of all, Carlos, um, just need you to state um, your name and um, your origin and your place of birth. My name is Carlos Eric Cavazzo, and my I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, and my dad is Mexican. My mom is American. Okay, and, perfect. So, como estas? Muy bien, man. Oh, I was bueno, born in bueno. East LA. <laughs> right on. Thank you very much. So I'm going to put you on defense, and you're American, so we'll do that. All right. Ronnie, how are you doing? Ronnie Borschert, is that how you pronounce it? Borchert. Borchert. Oh, okay. I was going to go with the French Canadian thing. So, yeah, yeah. Well, if you want to say it that way, it's a uh, boycott. I'll go Borchert. Okay. How are you? Good, man. All right. So, where were you born? I was born in Kitimat, British Columbia. And uh, my parents are both German uh, from Berlin and Essen, Germany. And uh, yeah, yeah, they moved to Kitimat and uh, had me there and then moved to the Bay area. And, uh, I grew up in, uh, both places. Do you speak German? Yeah. It was my first Wie language. Is, wie geht es dir, Ronnie? Ganz gut, danke. Danke gut, danke good. I'm going to put <laughs> you, uh, I'm going to put you as a forward and you're, I'll just put down Canadian. Yeah. So we got one to one. Uh, Stet, how are you doing, man? I'm having a good day. It's nice to see you. I'm uh, Stet Holland. I'm English and Italian. I was born in Plymouth, Mass., port of the Mayflower. Um, migrated west to uh, Los Angeles. I live between um, Las Vegas and Florida right now. And uh, I like playing rock and roll. Right. Yeah. Oh, and you've been to like, <laughs> Metal Church and Wasso. Como esta? Oh. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, I'm pardon? Como esta? <laughs> That's Italian for how are you? Yeah, I know. That's yeah. You did ask me if I knew Italian, and I and I told you I fake it. I say pizza spaghetti. You know, that's what I know. Uh, <laughs> well, we 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 always need a good drummer um, in any band to make it successful. Otherwise, you don't have a band. The same with a goalie or a defenseman in hockey. So I'm going to put you on the back end during net. Oh, goody. <laughs> and you're American, so we got two to one. Um, nice target. I'm a Canadian. I'm up here in Canada. Eh? Right on the border with uh, Michigan. Actually, there's twin cities. We got Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, where I am, yeah. and Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, over there, where they are. So it's actually one, two. It's freaking two, two. So we need a tiebreaker. I'm gonna put myself up front, and uh, if Greg, <laughs> if Greg Chason comes in, we're gonna uh, we're gonna be able to elevate ourselves above Carlos and Stet. Unfortunately, Ronnie. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways. Awesome. We're here to talk about uh, the new album, So Shall It Be. Um, great album, by the way. I, I got wind of it. Uh, it Hurts Me is a great tune. It's, it's doing great on YouTube. Um, another single is You Shine. That's a great one. Um, the band obviously was formed uh, with Jeff Labar, Frank Benelli, and um, Tony Franklin, yourself, Ronnie. And then you kind of guys came back to it as like a bit of a tribute Tell me right now, um, well, one question I have is, Freak Show, when you guys came up with that original title, did you guys um, worry about copyright issues or any kind of um, lawsuits as per Rick James? No, because there, there were like already 46 bands in the whole world called Freak Show. Yeah. So we just became the 47th band. You know what I mean? It it really didn't matter when it came to that because there were yeah. so many. 
like you know when when we first started the that band um we came up with that name in 2009 you know so we had a myspace and then there was like four other bands and a couple of them wrote us and said hey we're called freak show and i'm i'm like what do you guys do and he goes well we play covered covers in this small town you know small town and i just didn't even care you know i don't think anybody i think there's another band that even has videos called freak show too but you know mm -hmm. who cares well it really doesn't uh, matter because you know well, actually i told you this interview wasn't going to be normal and you walked right into <laughs> it I, you walked right into it what i meant was um you guys because you have such a vast history with all the bands you guys have been in that are big name bands it's like sons of apollo it's like a super group so what i was saying was with rick james is it would be understandable if you guys were to have super freak memberships and be announced everybody get your hands up for the super freaks do, 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 do. she's a super <laughs> freaky girl ronnie you don't get that <laughs> I like you, Stat. You're laughing at all my jokes, man. How about you too? Ronnie, That's you're the bomb for Canada. You, you <laughs> remind me of my friend Rod from Canada. He's just like you. If I, if I showed you a picture of him, you guys are like brothers. And then you have the same sense of humor. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. So, that's what I was uh, suggesting about Rick James. So, obviously not. But if you guys want to use that uh, Super Freaks membership uh, for your fan clubs and stuff, just buy me a coffee and I'll sign over to it because it was mine. I trademarked <laughs> that right now. It's generous. Uh, That's very generous. Um, Get you with Tim Hortons. I'm Tim not a big Hort Tim Hortons fan. I like country style. Song. Bomb. Bomb. <laughs> I, I, um, I try to help you. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. I'm going to go with this one first. Um. I'm going to get to the, I'll leave the good stuff for later. So influences um, for you three guys, just really quickly, we'll round the horn. Uh, we'll start with you, uh, Carlos, and then, then Ronnie, then Stat. Just name your, your musical influences. And um, I ask you guys just for the respect of the viewers, leave me out of it because that would be a conflict of interest. Go Carlos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, my musical influences are definitely like early bands, the Beatles, Rolling Stones, uh, Led Zeppelin, The Who, you know, Deep, Deep Purple. Guitar influences would be like Jimi Hendrix, uh, Michael Schenker, uh, Richie Blackmore, uh, Eddie Van Halen, um, a lot of people, even classical guitar players as well. Really? Um, there was a good one up here in Canada, um, Lana Boyd. You ever heard of her? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, she's okay. great. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Is she okay, Canadian? Yeah, she is Canadian. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Wow. She, yeah, she migrated to California like everybody does, yeah. but and she's been around for a long time. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, and, and actually Rick Emmett's a great class. He's had a great too. career. Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, Ronnie, uh, your influences. Uh let's start with Casey and Finnegan. Um Green Giant. Mr. No, uh, I like, uh, you know, I was I was a big Kiss fan. Um, but I, I was like, you know, I was groomed by my parents for, for music. So I started with like Elvis and Neil Diamond, you know, just really started getting songs in my head, understanding that, you know, I really enjoyed music. And then like, you know, Van Halen and Kiss, ACDC, Def Leppard, you know, paved the way and Ozzy. Yeah, I hear you. Um, just to let you guys know, watching, um, when he said grooming, he was talking about musically. We're not talking P. Diddy stuff here, so. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> All right, Seth, you're on, buddy. And you, your lighting looks great, man. You got to teach these other cats. And nothing, not, not specifically you, Ronnie, but, I mean, his lighting looks great. Well, yeah. what happened was. He's got stage uh, lighting. Is that what he has? Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, I'm on. I'm on the stage. I, I got a bar in Florida, and I didn't. It's so hard sometimes to find a place around here to do interviews. You know, I tried all sorts of stuff, and uh, 
Usually I do them in, in, in day, daytime and use the daylight because it's Florida. But I got caught the last couple of times at night. And I'm like, shit. And I ran around circles. I didn't really know how to turn my own stage lights on. But we got them on. My buddy Lorenzo's here right now. He got me sorted today. Hey, oh. Lorenzo. But yeah, so um, thank you. But it, it accidentally it looks so. pretty cool. And I'm like, don't it's move so a thing. I, I got it right. So come up here for a minute. I got, I got my lighting right a, a minute ago. And so thanks. So it's coming up. Uh, but yeah, I'm at I'm, I'm at my this, bar. I'm you know I'm Archie this Bunker. Is Archie Bunker's place here. This is our main road crew guy, Carlos. This uh, is Lorenzo uh, Del Vecchio. Uh, Get down there, buddy. Yeah, Del Vecchio. Lorenzo. That's a that's a famous uh, Canadian. There was a hockey player named Del Vecchio for the Red Wings. Hockey player named Del Vecchio. Uh, Alex, the Red Wings. There's a few Del Vecchios. Right he doesn't know what he's saying. I could tell him anything. This could be fucking hilarious. Sure <laughs> but uh, you know, Lorenzo has been with me Go since uh, Lorenzo yeah. been with me since Walt lost back in like ninety nine, two thousand. Which oh. one did you start with me? Two thousand, two thousand, two thousand. So this guy's been for me for like a quarter of a century. The poor guy. Uh, he did Walt with me, <laughs> uh, and uh, he just did the last metal church, all all that stuff with me. And uh, we're we're doing a show right now. It's called the Live eighty five. It's an Elvis tribute. Um, wow. Steve Unger from Metal Church is is the singer. And we're putting it together. We got some Florida shows here next week, and uh, he'll be with me there. So he's an amazing dude, a, a dear friend, and uh, yeah. he keeps he keeps the stage together. Jump the, right well, tell tell Joe to um, Google Ernst. Alex Delvecchio. Hey, buddy, you need, you, you need to go Google Alex Delvecchio. I know the hockey player. Yep. The goalie. Yeah, there yeah. we go. We got he him. Knows. He knows. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, range, I All right, buddy. All right. Show this hook. Thanks. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your musical influence is my friend. Oh, well, drumming wise, you know, I, I, it all started with Buddy Rich and, um, and then I, uh, found my way towards, um, I like Carmine a piece. He was a, he was a genius. And, uh, and so I just is, spoke with so Carmine good. yesterday. And, How you know, you? Vinny and I are, Vinny and I are good friends. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no I, I interrupted you. <laughs> I know, but I'm just being polite. Uh, so <laughs> no, I'm so being anyway. polite. I'm Canadian, eh? Yeah, it's all right. Eh? Hey, I, I'm sorry. I'm all over the. I'm all over the place right now, but I just came from lunch with Brian Vollmer from Helix. You know who, Brian? Yeah, I interviewed Brian. Yep. Yeah, we, I just had lunch with him an hour ago. Um, but, yeah, my influences started Buddy Rich, you know, Carmine. Uh, then the, the Ian Pace is another big one. And, uh, you know, got Stuart Copeland. You know, it just – I got a bunch of uh, different drumming influences that, that, that kind of move me into the – whatever it is I am today. And then musically, it's like, a, you know, Rush, Deep Purple – Zeppelin, of course, Bad Company, Van Halen was a game changer for sure. And, um, and but at the same time, I got vi busy in my 20s making my own records. And I listened to other people less and less because I didn't want to be influenced by the drummers around me. I wanted to be original. You know what I mean? So basically ripping off Keith Moon and Neil Peart was original for me. <laughs> I was going to ask you guys about this is final. You borrowed, he didn't rip off. What's that, Carlos? He borrowed, he didn't rip off. I'm kidding. Yeah, I was. I was permission. highly. I was. No, I was. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I was highly influenced by those guys. But I got to mention a guy that's a dear friend of mine. I just bumped into him the other night. His name's De Dennis Elliott, and he's the original drummer for Foreigner. And I never realized how his, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, double vision. The, some of those, like, <laughs> when I listen to Wasp, it's like. I'm like, holy shit, that's where I came from. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. Dennis was a, a, a big influence. And you, maybe a subconscious in, influence you're kind of alluding to. Like you didn't realize it until you listened. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I told him that. He's, he's become a good friend. But, you know, it's like when you're a drummer, man, you take a little piece of everything and then you, you finally take it all and try and find some individuality in it. And it's hard as a drummer because it's not necessarily notes, but I think melodically. So it's like, it's kind of weird for me, you know. I hear you. No, for sure. Thanks, man. Um, Ronnie, um, and don't let me forget about the Spinal Tap thing in, in a second here, guys. So, Ronnie, <laughs> when you guys um, are, uh, you know, you recorded this album and everything, you did it virtually, I think. And so are you guys planning on any live shows? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, okay. we, we're, we're definitely going to do that. We're uh, okay. probably starting the West Coast. And uh, we're already talking about uh, putting some stuff together on the East Coast. Well, then you got to make the Middle Coast. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, um, that's you know that's how it goes. So, <laughs> in 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 reference to that, 
You don't want to mislead the, the public, right? Or the concert goers. So with the band Freak Show and you have that Freak Show, you know, on the marquee, are you guys going to um, incorporate um, some bearded ladies or some dwarfs in, on the set, on, <laughs> yeah. on the stage? <laughs> Bring well, up the monkey well, stores. Seth, oh, I should Seth's be politically to, correct. Uh, Seth, I, I, Seth's going to wear a dress for the first half of the show. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So there's that. Uh, okay. Um, no, I, I no, probably not. No, I would well, be I, cool I, to have some kind of a circus backdrop and stuff. That would be neat. Yeah, like, and I apologize to the viewers. I wasn't. I was. I should have been politically correct. I didn't mean dwarfs. I meant midgets. <laughs> midgets on stilts. Midgets on stilts with snakes. Very right nice. And, and a beard. Oh my god, that's awesome. So, Carlos, um, you you look like you haven't aged. The first time I interviewed you <laughs> was was the last time I interviewed you, <laughs> and I said you still look like you're. 25 or 30. Actually, I watched a Starlux. I am. Nice I'm one. only 26. I was 13 when I'm <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah, you had the puffy <laughs> hair when I, yeah. when I saw that video. But anyways, I'm just grateful I still have hair. You know, I thank my lucky stars after all I've been through. I'm sitting right here, man. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carlos, um, you said at the time you're 150 or 150 pounds. You're about that now. Uh, like 155, 160, usually in that range, 150, 160. And I find that, is, is Vicky around? No, I... Uh, she's around the house somewhere, yeah. Okay, all right. But, all right, well, I'll say this one. So anyways, you're, you're talking about how you kind of don't eat breakfast, you eat a meal, but you have, you like your sugars, <laughs> you like your desserts? I do. <laughs> I'm a sweet guy. I do. I like sweet. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this. In the last 12 hours, have you tasted anything sweet? And I remind I you, had... this is a PG show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had my it... coffee that morning, so. Okay. All right. I thought I was going to get a bigger laugh out of that one, but anyways. <laughs> I, 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 I can put in some laugh tracks. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, what else is going to ask you guys? Do it. Put in laugh tracks on everything. That'd be funny. That would be funny, yeah. Well, I probably will. I'll put Duffman in there, and I'll do the Simpsons, the whole thing. Um, Casey and Finnegan. Casey and Finnegan. <laughs> Remember Ernie Combs? <laughs> That's who Mr. Dressup was. Oh, is that Ernie was his Combs. name? Yeah, oh. that was his name. I love him. Um, Carlos uh, and Stet, you don't know who he's talking about. It was uh, The name rings a, a bell. I've heard that name, but yeah. I don't know who it is. Well, he, Casey and Finnegan were a, another lame, lame Canadian show, like the Beachcombers, <laughs> eh? Uh -huh. We had like three shows that were terrible, but we're known for them, like the Beachcombers, Mr. Dress Up, um, Polka Dot Door. <laughs> just terrible stuff. I'll put hey, pictures up. Just like, <laughs> actually, I, I have to tell you the truth. I interviewed Brent Butt. And his stand-up is great. I don't know if you know, guys. I love that minus. show. Hey, listen, I love you know that show. You Corner do. Gas. Is, I loved it. See, I'm not a big fan, but I interviewed him, and I like his stand-up. I think the show by Jerry D, um, Mr. D, where he's a teacher, that show's funny. And I remember interviewing another Canadian, Derek Sagan. You know, yeah, we're losing things. we're losing Carlos and Stat right now. I'm here. <laughs> no, we're all right. Enjoy yourselves, man. We're fine. I'm listening. I like it. Were you moving back or something? Or your phone just um delight? Oh, my phone freaked out. Oh, freaked out. You are you are you guys using that all the time now? Freak out, freak this, freak that. I don't know. Uh, no, no. Might as well. <laughs> Okay, so we'll get on to something I wanted to ask you guys about. Spinal Tap. Right now they're doing, I think they're, I thought it was going to be released in March, the new one. But I, I think it's actually being filmed or something. Anyways, you have any thoughts on, are you pro against it? Like sometimes a blockbuster, uh, a great movie shouldn't have a sequel to it. But I've always thought I wanted one for this one. And uh, Paul McCartney's making a cameo in it, and some other huge names. You guys have any thoughts on it? Stat, we'll start with you. Uh, yeah, I'm cool. I'm interested to see what it is. I'm, I'm not overly invested in it, but I, I'm I'm not all against it or anything. You know, I think it's cool. I'll watch it. I'll check it out. 
Well, you're talking about earlier, you're saying something about original. And then I was going to interject with saying, remember the, the new originals in the Spinal Tap movie? Of course. Yeah. You don't? <laughs> no. Well, there's, <laughs> a, there's a scene in the Spinal Tap movie when they're talking to Christopher Guest and Michael McKeon and how they yeah. met. And they said, well, we met in the originals, this band called the originals. Then we found out there was another band in the east part of London called the originals. Well, then we changed <laughs> our name to the regulars. And then we thought, well, the regulars isn't good. We'll just go to new originals. Very nice. It's good stuff. <laughs> Carlos got that one. He, it's true, though. So, Carlos, do yeah. you, you have any thoughts on this Spinal Tap movie? Uh, yeah, I think if it's done right, it could be great. I know when the, the first movie comes out and it's so good, people have high expectations of the second one, a remake, a sequel. But um, if it's done right, it could be good. I, I, I'd be into watching it. Yeah, and it's everybody's yeah. the same that Michael McKeon, Christopher Guest, Harry Shearer, who I've interviewed, he's he's back in it, and Rob Reiner is directing it again. Like honestly, are those guys the band? The original band members are the band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Rob Reiner was the guy doing the the videography. He was like the right. documentary wait, guy. Wait, wait. But yeah, all Rob the three guys Reiner. are back in it. Was that what I say? What Rob Reiner that guy is. <laughs> What did I say, Ronnie? How did I miss? Yeah, yeah, I, I'd watch that. I wonder who the drummer's going to be. I was just going to say, man, who's the lucky dog who gets to die <laughs> this time? That's actually a good point. So we don't want you in the band, Stat, Spinal Tap, because no. we'll lose you. No. <laughs> they only, those yeah. guys only last about two years or eight months, and then they blow up or something. Yeah. They aren't, they aren't the only band I don't want to be in, so don't worry about it. It's, it's cool. <laughs> Hey, you want to you want to give us a couple names here? Get some juicy gossip going. Oh no, no, I, I'm just saying. No, well, I'm, I'm just saying. I, you know, my point being, uh, oh. we talked about it yesterday. We 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 uh, at our age and, and the and where we're all at, we only want to work with peaceful, loving guys like each other right now. So yeah. you know, it's oh. like I. My point being, I wouldn't want to be in a situation that wasn't a brotherhood. That's all. Okay. And I'm lucky. All my you. situations are my situations are cool. You know, people Sweet. I work with are nice. That's awesome. Uh, Ronnie, so what made you um, leave Canada, man? Like, what's up, dude? Oh, well, I, you know, yeah. well, I don't want to get political, but, you know, I, I hadn't been there for the, like the last three years or so. Uh, kind of left, after, got kind of bad there, but uh, I own a house and uh, I rent, I'm renting it out, and but, you know, I just, uh, my wife and I, we live here in uh, Nevada and uh, near Tahoe, right up the street, actually. And uh, we just love it here. So, but, you know, in time, I I'll, I'll get back that way. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, I discourage you against it because I like you. Welcome come back. <laughs> this place sucks. Actually, are you uh, renting out any rooms in your place in Nevada? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know things are uh, interesting up here, to say the least. Um, are you guys doing any more writing? Are you, are you constantly writing? I'm sure, like, I know, Carlos, you definitely write all the time, but... Yeah, guys... I think all of us probably do. You know, we we'll always have music going through our heads, but, uh, um, yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll be coming up ideas for a new record in the future. Yeah, so I, what... I, I wrote a killer riff the other day, and I sent it to Steph. I liked it. I liked it a lot, Ron. Good. I like it. I like it a lot. That's awesome. <laughs> um so for people to go on i'll just let everybody know um i actually i removed myself from facebook recently and instagram and twitter just because it was a distraction but are you got do you guys have a website or anything set up on facebook for people to go to no on facebook yeah we have a a, a groups uh thing freak show group page where people could just go there and you know, we post stuff and everyone can talk shit and say whatever they want and all that. Yes, they uh, do. And they do. And then the we, have, you know, we all have individual Facebook pages except for Carlos. He doesn't well, have well, one. He has an Instagram, though. Yeah. He's got a wife. And then that's where that's funny. I got a hold of Vicky to get my interview with Carlos and somebody else yeah. uh, said the same thing. I think it was that Brian guy from Rock Eyes or somebody said it recently. Uh -huh. Or maybe one of the guys in the band that was watching a video and I thought, holy geez, is, is she obviously your manager? 
Uh, no, not really. Uh, she helps me out in a lot of my stuff, but she she's more into the social uh, media than me, so it's easier to get a hold of me through her. And she's yeah. all into it. I'm, I'm not that big on it. Uh, I do it for because I have to in certain ways, but uh, I'm not that into Very it. Very cool. Well, uh, we'll just get everybody ambushed. Vicky Cavazzo on Facebook, friend requester. <laughs> and and this will work out, Carlos, because she can sell a lot of merch. Uh, she does handle my personal merch, and she does her own thing, too. She sells jewelry and clothing. And Oh, yeah, I've seen it. It's like, um, I mean, just tons of stuff on there. Um, yeah. It reminds me she of the shopping so channel. She's taking up all the space. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and so... And Ronnie, uh, you're on Facebook under Ronnie Borchert. Borchert? No, it's uh, it's it's a yeah, Facebook Ronnie Borchert. You know, A.K. Marcus Allen Christopher, which is my Miss Crazy name, but Facebook made me put my real name. You know, about four years ago. So really, okay, yeah. I didn't know but I don't care. Do that. I don't. It doesn't matter anymore. You know, what's it matter anymore? Stat, are you on Facebook? Oh yeah, I'm very Facebooky. I got uh, I got a couple of personal accounts and I have an artist page and uh, my bar has a page and God, I think my RVs even have pages. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Do you run all that? That's a lot of work. You, you take care of it all? I am blessed to have social media people that, that are amazing. Yeah. Joe. Joseph and Karen. Because it does take up a lot of time to go through all that. And deal with it all does, that. man. That's why I got out of it. Well, not because I had too much to do with it, but I just, my own ways. But so anyways, I'll get um, Ronnie, um, who uh, we correspond more, to send me links to all your pages uh, so people can go and check everything out. Um, <clears throat> before I let you go, I don't want to forget anything. Um, first of all, the opposite of unsubscribe. <laughs> Subscribe. Subscribe. Hit the Subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. Oh, yeah. And um, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask this for the 20th time. I've already asked Carlos, but we'll get him to quickly um, give it a, another answer. Um, favorite Canadian band. And, and the funny thing is, guys, is 99% of my, well, I'll say 95% of my subscribers are American. But because I'm Canada, I'm held to accountability by the Premier of Ontario. So I have to ask this question. Favorite, <laughs> favorite Canadian uh, band or artist, Carlos? Favorite Canadian band? Probably, probably Rush. I have to say Rush. Are you saying that because uh, that's the only one you guys know? Everybody says no, Rush. No, no. <laughs> okay. That's I'm probably... not going to say that. Okay. Well, I, see, the thing is, I go with Rush and Triumph, but I, you know what? It's making sense. I haven't gotten an interview with Getty Lee or um, Alex yet, and I'm wondering maybe this is why. Because I say, <laughs> except for Rush. <laughs> because in the two top bands, Triumph and Rush, I put Triumph up there ahead of them. Triumph I, I just like, there, but yeah, I love Triumph, yeah. Just like that crunchy sound. So, Ronnie, your uh, favorite Canadian uh, band or artist, and as I said before, I excuse myself, just a conflict of um, interest. So, <laughs> Well, when I was growing up, my dad listened to BTO a lot, you know, uh, but it, it, I kind of got into Trooper when I was a kid, but uh, I, I'm I'm pretty much gonna go with Lover Boy. I, I I was a big Lover Boy fan because I'm from a different generation, right? And I thought they were great when they came out. I thought both those yeah. records, those first two, were so kick ass. You know, yeah. Mike Reno was badass. Yeah, and, yeah and they're actually really he's actually going on tour with uh, Foreigner and John Waite coming up. Nice. Lover Boy, Lover Boys, oh. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, quite super, had the opportunity of uh, supporting them in the eighties, and you know I watched them every night. And they were really spot on, great every night. Yeah, yeah. You know, for sure. I mean, turn me loose and yeah, um, good records. Hot, the kid is hot tonight, and that stuff. Yeah, for sure, guys. Yeah. Um, Stet, who would you say? Well, I have to start with Rush, Triumph, Helix, Loverboy, Learen. And um, um, that's probably what an about order. The killer dwarfs. I like the killer dwarfs. <laughs> I, I love the killer dwarfs, and I I have friends that absolutely adore the killer, killer dwarfs. So it's their there favorite are. band. And um, but I, I I was you know I never I didn't get overly exposed. You know I didn't get the enough exposure. Oh I really man, appreciate them. I, 
I, I like Helix, and for some reason, I put them con connected together. I don't know why, but Helix and Killer Dwarfs, and I'm, I'm like a little bit higher with the Killer Dwarfs. It's just, just the same thing. It's their, um, it. I've met Ross a few times, and um, I've actually brought them here to the Sioux. Well, I helped bring them here to the Sioux to play, and um, I got them to ride a tricycle. I don't know if you've ever seen Killer Dwarfs uh, live videos. Ross will ride a tricycle around stage. I love <laughs> it. Hilarious. And Daryl Miller is a great drummer. So, yeah, I mean. Yep, yep. I know that. And he's American, yeah, too. He was, he was born in Buffalo, I think. I but he, I think. No, I, what? See, Buffalo is so close to Ontario. I don't know how it happened originally when they came about, Carlos. But um, he hooked up with the guys in uh, the Killer Dwarfs. He was the original. He's an original drummer. And yeah. the funny thing is, I think he. I could be wrong, but I think he uh, did a reverse Ronnie, and he actually moved up here. <laughs> I yeah. think he lives in Toronto or something. Wow. That's so, funny. so Ronnie left. We got Daryl. I mean, you guys are still on par with each other. So. <laughs> Trade off. <yeah. laughs> Sorry, Greg didn't Prisoner make swap. it. He, he wanted to be here, you know. What's that? Yeah. Sorry, Greg didn't make it. You know, fellow Canadian and all. I know, and I was going to pronounce his name, Greg. Greg Chasson. <laughs> Chasson. Where, where was he born? In Canada. Do you know? I think Toronto. Okay, so he's not a Quebec. Eh? Quebec -er. sure. I think so. I'm not so sure, though. Thank so. you. Well, that's okay. I'll get Greg another time. We'll get you guys back on again. So I'd like to thank you guys uh, once again for watching. I'll put the links below to um, Freak Show fan page and all that stuff. I'll put links to... Um, the two singles out, You Shine and It Hurts Me. And then you can go to e Eonian Records, I think it's pronounced Eonian, and purchase the album and the merch. And uh, once again, guys, thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Thanks. thanks, Ernest.